it's a trend I noticed that films seem to be now avoiding the horror of the crime and dealing instead with the outcome. Hmm. So if you look if you look at a film like Tar, it's about it's not about the deed. And we kind of talked about this, me and Cece, in our podcast we did about Tar. It's not about the deed of what happened. We never know what happens. It's about the punishment and mm. the takedown of a sociopathic abuser. I mean, we assume that what happened, but there's no narrative unfolding of the crime playing out. And then you look mm -hmm. at a film like Women Talking, it's got these kind of Terrence Malick style flashes to the aftermath of the crimes, you know, a lot of blood uh, on the walls and, and blood on the sheets and things like this, but we don't see the acts played out. It's not that I want that, mm. but it, it, it is a change. It's almost as if we're done depicting the actual deed and we just expect that it happened. So I think this mm. is what I mean by it's an odd reflection of social media. Just take our word for it that this happened. <laughs> we're not going to show the horror of the crime. And then even in a movie like After Sun, I don't know if you saw After Sun. Oh, it did, yeah. Yeah, it was nominated for Best Actor. We never know what his issue was. We never learn it, and it seems like it doesn't matter. I'm not appealing for these violent incidents necessarily, as we saw like in the 1970s and 1980s. But it does seem to be that the trend is going now more towards a, an explanation and a litigation of what happened. And I think this is mm. what I mean by how social media is having an effect on narratives. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I do. I, I, I think you're definitely right. And I think it probably reflects kind of a general turn towards risk aversion yes. in cinema. I think there so. was a, a very good article written. It was It was about Sundance, but it was very much about kind of the risk aversion that's taken hold of, of Hollywood's and even kind of indie filmmaking. It was written mm -hmm. by, I believe, Eric Cohen at IndieWire. He kind of made the case that there there did seem to be this risk aversion, but that the future was kind of looking a little bit, there, we may be kind of turning a corner on that. But I would say what you've highlighted here is perhaps two responses to this trend, where it is, it's just more difficult to kind of depict the incident, you know, whether it be a violent incident or an abusive incident or whatever it is, without including a, a sort of moralizing gaze mm. attached to it, because mm -hmm. there is this kind of expectation that it, it must be condemned mm -hmm. and prosecuted within the film itself right. to present kind of a, a, you know, condemnation and to kind of have uh, a justice served within the film itself, that filmmakers have found strategies around this. Now, I think in the case of, of women talking, one strategy is just to kind of say it happened. You know, yeah. we don't need to talk about it, take our word for it sort of thing. I think Sarah pa Pauly wisely chose a social environment in which there's very little reason to doubt that it happened. Yeah, and there's no doubt that it happened. But we, don't right. and I, it, but we don't see it play out. Yeah, Even the characters themselves acknowledge, uh, w you know, while they they have this, this long discussion that, well, you know, this you saw one guy, but the other guys that he identified as, as also being perpetrators, maybe they're innocent. You know, like there, there is this element of doubt introduced, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it is kind of like assumed in the film that these happened. I think with, say, Tar or After Sun, you have a very different strategy, which is to use the ambiguity of the inciting event as part of the kind of texture of the film itself. You know, oh, with, I like with Tar, yeah. it, it's very much part of, I think, what the film is trying to do mm -hmm. to say there is perhaps an inherent ambiguity, not only to events and incidents, but people. And how do mm -hmm. we deal with this? Mm. With After Sun, it's, it's perhaps more pointing to the emotional ambiguity and complexity mm -hmm. of, I, I remember Charlotte Wells in an interview talking about how, you know, this is very much based on, on her, her real life experiences and her, her father. And I believe she said one of the main inspirations for her film was looking back at pictures of her father uh, when they were on vacation and realizing how young he was and how 
how much she identified now with what he must have been at that time and realizing that the the ambiguity the uncertainty that she's feeling now is something he probably must have felt but yet that wasn't apparent to her when she was a child mm-hmm. and so that's i think an effective strategy in the case of tar and after sun and perhaps even in women talking though she you know it, it's down to her her very specific choice of a social environment i think in general if we take a look at an example like i don't know promising young woman or something like that i find that's an example where you know they avoid showing some of the incidents more to kind of just say take our word for it like there there's no ambiguity involved it's they are very much kind of trying to say like it's more about how you deal with it because what happened is just kind of this assumed thing Mm -hmm. and you know the film has its own way of dealing with that i don't think it's particularly effective or if you look at something like even ridley scott's the last duel which Mm -hmm. tried and absolutely failed to implement this rashomon type uh, conceit where you would see this you know sexual assaults take place from different points of view and yet all the points of view show exactly the same thing because you can't i mean it, it's getting into very you know, tricky waters if you try to suggest basically a he said she said mm-hmm. in the context of today's hollywood mm-hmm. you know that would make the film very rife for for criticism and you know i think the tendency towards risk aversion probably led the filmmakers to decide not to go down that path. So that's kind of my long-winded response to what you just said. I I really appreciate that. And I think what we're finding because of this is that cinema is really more than ever trying to exist at this discursive level. And I don't mean that Mm. in the, in the textual analysis of film meaning of the word discursive. I mean that things are being discussed Um, Not that we're discussing the film, but that things are in the film are being discussed because this is the way things are being played out in our lives. We're we're seeing a lot of explanation. We're seeing a lot of communication about things, but there's no plot of the event. The the event is not plotted Um, Mm. or rather the, the plot becomes the aftermath, you know, the inciting incident one of the tenets of Aristotelian poetics, you know, that there's an, there's an inciting incident that turns, you know, the fortunes of everybody. It's, it's almost like that, rather than showing it, which is what tragedy of old would do, and I think cinema of the 70s and 80s would do, that it's just a given, that this most important element of tragedy in the classic sense is now just a given. And I find that... Mm. really interesting indeed and, indeed and perhaps a problem <laughs> it certainly can be i i mean it's mm-hmm. it's interesting to view that as a problem that films are now responding to in in better or worse ways mm-hmm. you know and i i certainly agree that you're right 